So, Fozzie, what do you reckon? Yeah, How no, do you went the um, weekend went? Oh, look, I thought it was really good. It's, um, you know, it's it's a competition that, well, I guess what I applaud is that we're trying something a bit different. We're getting all five, all, all the five New Zealand teams over there and, and playing against the Australians, I think, is a, a great initiative. And it's, um, you know, well, I guess the competition will reflect back and, and review how it went. But, you know, I think it's a great thing that we're, we're trying to adapt and, and add a bit of, a, I guess, a new dimension to Super Rugby. Fozzie, you've um, added to the staff just, just recently. Um, has that come from your review from last year? How's that come? And if, if you need a red wine consultant, I'm available. Yeah, I've been waiting, actually, JK. And uh, I've heard you've got some nice wines, so I'm looking forward to catching up. So it's... Um, well, look, there's, all, there's always going to be a bit of change. You know, we've had... Um, you know, we've, we've got Foxy leaving after the Iris series, so we've got, you know, he's going to be replaced by Joe Smith, which is pretty well advertised. And uh, and we just sort of felt that after last year, you know, through the review, we just really, really believe we've got a, a growing number of players, or I guess new players at the international level, and we just felt our overall skill level can, can add with a bit of a boost. And that's why in behind the scenes, we've, we've added straws into into the mix for, the, for that regard. So... You know, he brings a bit of a focus on the micro part of the game and, you know, is going to work alongside the coaches to, to make sure that we're, we're really at cutting edge at that point. Fozzie, so you talked about the review um, and you're watching Super Rugby. Are you seeing the players that you think you can, uh, that you need that can address what's come up in the review? Yeah, look, I think so. You know, I mean, part of the review is extremely extremely positive about some of the the things that we went through you know without dwelling on last year it was a it was a very unique year you know what you know one like probably the all blacks have never had before so yeah and that brought up some challenges brought up a whole lot of exciting things too you know we you know normally in the in the third year of a world cup cycle you're probably starting to try to build your depth um whereas we were sort of forced to do that last year with the 10 tests, 12 weeks, no, no, I guess with MIQ and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, we've got a we've got a good base of players and that's why Super Rugby this year has been so important for us because we've had, you know, we had up to 40 players at the end of uh, the campaign last year. And so giving them all an opportunity to go and show how much they've learned and, and I guess put their hand up for this year. So, um, and, there's a, and there's a few doing that. Fossey, I've got to ask you, you, you've played Super Rugby, you've coached in Super Rugby, and now you rely heavily on it to give you the players for the highest level. In your mind, how do you see, what do you see as the purpose of the Super Rugby competition? Well, look, your, your, your players need to play. And, you know, we've, we, we want a, a high-quality sort of international-type competition where we can... You know, test ourselves against you know players from well, I guess within and, and also in other countries. So you know, it's been it's changed around a lot. Super rugby over many many years. When rugby went professional and it started, everyone thought it'd be the downfall of New Zealand rugby because we wouldn't be able to deal in the professional era. But we've shown that you know we've got some got some great franchises there at the moment, all doing a lot of work in terms of the development, linking with uh, with the provincial unions and, and the system, you know, whilst we critique it hard and we, we talk a lot about its weaknesses, it's also got a massive degree of strength to it. And and it has helped support a, an all-black team that has, you know, consistently been able to perform, at, at, I guess, at the top sort of echelon. And so, you know, we just want to keep having a, a tough, even competition and... And where possible, as many games against other country players as well. So, uh, Fozzie, do you think we're missing the South African side? And does that have an effect on you understanding uh, one of our biggest foe? Oh, look, it's a, you know, I could say something and it'll probably give a few headlines, but at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's been well documented why South Africa aren't in it at the moment. You know, the travel would have been impossible the last two or three years. I, I, and, and before that, a lot of the South African players, top players, were were leaving and playing in Europe, which sort of weakened their teams. But look, in an ideal world, I, I loved having South Africa in the competition. You know, they brought a different style, and now we've just got to find other ways to grow our experience of playing them. Fozzie, I, I want to ask you the fact we've seen, obviously there's been a lot of attention brought to the fact, and you mentioned the, the red card to Damien McKenzie last year, and it has all of a sudden, it's, it's been high profile, right, the fact that a number of players have suffered this year. 
Are you concerned at the scrutiny now and the fact that do you think it's going to have an impact at test level? Uh, look, it will have an impact at test level, no doubt about that. I think we saw that in 2019 at the World Cup when this initiative really hit home and started. Um, they've certainly been ramping it up this year, I think. And um, and we've got to learn. We've got to learn as players. And it's, um, there's, you know, I think when you analyse it, um, Goldie, it's that, it's, I think we have improved the quality of our tackler. And I think you'll see a lot of tacklers um, you don't see too many red cards for tacklers hitting the, the ball carrier high. and But a, a lot of the problem seems to be the tackle assist. It's the second guy coming in. And I think it's one of those things in the game where defence coaches, we're all trying to get you know two in the tackle to win that collision. It's often the second guy coming in who's not making that late adjustment based on the body change in the tackle. So... It's an area we've got to really think deeply about, about how hard we send that second man in and, and whether it's worth it at times. Fozzie, if you look at the stocks you've got round, back to the players, if you look at the stocks you've got round, what do you reckon when you've got to pick your squad in a, in a little while, what do you reckon the one area that's going to be the, the hardest to pick where there's going to be some good players that are going to miss out? Where, where's your stocks the best, mate? <sighs> well, where they're the best and where they're the hardest, it's... Um, you know, I think we've got we've got some big decisions to make. I, I think, you know, it's well documented. We've got some big decisions to make in the midfield. We've probably got some big decisions to make in the loose forwards. Um, I'd also put the front row in that category as well. You know, it's um, you know, last year we we went away with you know we had you know we were forced to take eight props with us last year, and so you know we won't be taking eight props this year, and 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 so there will be some tough decisions and. And clearly, we've with the last two years, we've we've had a, a lot of opportunities for a number of new players to come in and put their hand up, and, and many of them have actually played really, really well. And so you look at some of our loose forwards and some of the versatility we've got. The, the I guess the Ethan Black adders, the the Akira who's got coming back. I guess the rise of Dalton has, has all added a little bit of complexity, but that, that's exciting for us. How many do you plan on picking? Uh, 36 at this stage, Laura. So it's 36 for the first squad. That's sort of a, a standard Steinlager series um, size squad. And But that can change, you know, maybe uh, it won't go up, but it could change slightly down based on injuries and, and who who we have left standing after Super Rugby. Fozzie, I say it every week, 18 tests to go. So actually not that many. Does that influence what you're going to do around your selection for the 15 that go out there because that's not a lot of time to get combinations going. Yeah, look, um, good question. You know, I think if you look at a normal World Cup cycle, you, you normally spend two years, I guess, really cementing your, your culture, your team, your plan. You then you, you spend your third year really building your depth and, and honing it down. And then your fourth year, you just go and do it at a World Cup. And... We probably had to flip that over a little bit, JK. Like the first two years with the circumstance we got dealt with, we really, you know, we, we basically had to leave the shores with big squads. So we, we've really had a depth strategy the last two years. And, and this year we've got to hone that right down. So, you know, in many ways, while, whilst picking the 30, 34, 36 man squad is, um, is going to be tough and it always is, but a lot of our energy right now is on the combinations within that. It's within the 15 down to the 23 because this year we've really got to, I think you'll see us focus more on cementing combinations and having a bit more continuity in how we select the group. Ian Foster, I want to thank you so much for your time this evening. Uh, we really appreciate it. I know you've had a busy weekend in Gisborne, so thank you, and we'll see you again very soon. <laughs> Fozzie, stay tuned, though. JK's 23 is coming up. <laughs> part three. Big, big His 23 is coming up. So yeah. See how he goes. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's probably his golf score on the first two holes. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Foster, head coach for the All Blacks.